Welcome to USMD Prostate Cancer Center, a comprehensive, world-class cancer treatment facility and the only one of its kind in the United States. USMD Prostate Cancer Center offers every option available for the treatment of prostate cancer. One of only 12 centers in the U.S. approved to test the breakthrough high food treatment for prostate cancer. USMD Prostate Cancer Center continues to help pave the way for treatment and cure of the disease. There's a few things about prostate cancer that I think people need to realize. I mean, one of the biggest challenges that we've had, certainly over the last you know, several decades, is actually, number one, is finding the cancer. And I think that as we continue to progress in not only just the diagnosis and the treatment of prostate cancer, is trying to get to the area of where the cancer is located. And let me explain this for you real quick. If you look at a prostate, the average size of a prostate is a little bit bigger than a golf ball. When we actually do a biopsy on this, we actually take several needles inside of that, and we've actually gone through a, several different progressions of where, how we put needles in, et cetera, and so we numb up the patient. And routinely, it's a pretty, it's a relatively benign, you know, process, easy process. It takes about 10 minutes in the office. Now the question is, is can we get any better at actually finding those cancers? We're not at the level where we can say that person has a nodule right there, and that's a bump, and that's cancer. You still have to confirm that with a biopsy. However, we're getting better, and we're a whole lot better now than we were. Five five years ago and certainly much better 10 years ago. Now, I segue that into actually where we are today. And the goal here is the fact that we are now, compared to where we were 10 or 15 years ago, is that we continue to progress in terms of the gold standard for treatment of prostate cancer. If you look at the gold standard, it's actually removal of the prostate. And patients can actually do fantastic with that. However, is there another way in which we can treat prostate cancer that is potentially less invasive, which is even less invasive than doing it robotically and laparoscopically, and is there a way in which we can continue to push that envelope to make sure that we're causing less issues for the patient, particularly with the potential for erectile dysfunction and urination and incontinence. When we have prostate cancer, when a patient has prostate cancer, the first thing we want to try to figure out is, number one is, did we get a good sampling of that prostate? Assuming that we did, then we go forward with that patient and try to figure out, is this a patient we need to treat? If we're going to treat this patient, now we actually start going into different modalities for this. And the question is, is do we go back to our gold standard, which is surgery, or are there other things that we can do? And the answer is, there are other things we do. And there's a lot of exciting things that we have right now. When I talk to men about prostate cancer, I tell them to definitely get their yearly checkup. I tell them to go see a specialist if they need to. Uh, spare no expense, spare no time. Uh, take care of it as quickly as possible. Uh, adds years to your life. I'm thankful every day that I came to USMD Prostate Cancer Center. When patients are treated with image-guided radiation therapy on the Novalis TX system, they do undergo treatment for seven and a half weeks approximately. It can vary slightly depending on stage of disease and other factors, but each treatment takes approximately 10 to 12 minutes instead of the 45 minutes to an hour uh, of a radiosurgical treatment. The majority of that time is actually spent positioning the patient and creating that precise targeting uh, that we've mentioned previously. Actual treatment time may only be three to four minutes. In fact, we've implemented the rapid arc technology, which delivers treatment more quickly, which can prevent any opportunity for the prostate to move as we deliver that treatment in such a short period of time. In addition to that, uh, that same technology is allowing us to deliver the same dose to the prostate while limiting the dose even further to the adjacent critical structures and lowering the overall dose to the body. So it's a more efficient delivery system and once again an even more precise delivery system. You hear the word cancer and you automatically think that that's a death sentence. That's not the case. My salvation was that I had been doing the PSAs ever since I was 50 years old annually and as a result we caught mine in time. I would place USMD number one on my list for treatments. What are the symptoms of prostate cancer? Well there really aren't any symptoms of prostate cancer. So that's why we recommend annual screening for men that are in at-risk categories for prostate cancer. At USMD Prostate Cancer Center, we recommend annual prostate screening, which includes a PSA test and a digital rectal exam every year um, at patients in the age range that is at risk, which we would use 50 years old and older 
and then 40 year, years old and older for men with a family history or African American men. And these are following the American Neurologic Association guidelines. Active surveillance is monitoring the cancer, uh, acting on it if you need to. Um, so basically you're surveying that person with blood tests and with biopsies. And uh, if something progresses, you know, and you think they need, they need treatment, then you, you act then. Otherwise you continue to follow them and many people don't need treatment. There's people that have to qualify for active surveillance. So if someone needs radical treatment, they're going to get it. I'm going to tell them that, but they, if they need, you know, if they don't and they are a candidate for active surveillance, then we can follow that person in uh, prostate cancer. Just the, the nature of it is that it moves slowly. Um, and so if it's a type of cancer that doesn't metastasize quickly, then you can follow that person. They could live the rest of their life, not need and undergo any kind of unnecessary procedures and, uh, and have the sequela that come from having surgery. So they can do well without treatment. And until you have a plan, or at least the way I feel, until you have a plan, your life is just upside down completely. And you know, once I got to USMD and I got, I got that plan, and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and as things progressed, it just got better and better and better. And it, it was amazing. I mean, it really was amazing, you know, how things turned out. The challenge for after radical prostatectomy is preservation of erectile function. And if you have good function beforehand, and you would likely to recover that function about a year afterwards. Everybody has their rate of recovery, but then they may or may not require medicines such as Viagra or other PD-5 inhibitors. Um, the, that is with bilateral nerve sparing. We do everything we possibly can to spare the nerves uh, during surgery if it's the appropriate step from an oncology standpoint. That is that we won't be leaving any tumor behind. So we do a very uh, careful nerve preservation, robotic approach. It's under magnification. We use no heat, no cautery, no clips. We actually chill the nerves with ice water, and that is the best possible nerve sparing you can get. And so the rate of the recovery may be variable for the person, but it can't be much improved over the technique we use. Cryotherapy is the destruction of cancerous tissue by freezing it, much like we do for skin lesions on our skin when the dermatologist puts nitrogen on it and freezes it to death. We do the same thing with cryotherapy internally. By utilizing ultrasound in the rectum to visualize the prostate, we can place probes that run argon gas through the probes into the prostate and freeze it to negative 160 degrees, therefore killing those cancer cells within the body, thus ablating that entire tissue. So cryotherapy is no different than freezing skin lesions, it's just done internally with much more visualization and much more technique in freezing the area specified and avoiding damage to adjacent tissues. At the USMD Prostate Cancer Center, I had uh, cryoablation, which is the process of freezing my prostates in an effort to kill the cancer. Through my research, through what I was told, I had high expectations. Um, it's kind of like I didn't want to go to a hospital that, where I had mediocre expectations. I had high expectations. I was very happy with everything that transpired at the USMD Prostate Cancer Center, and they met or exceeded all my expectations. Well, salvage therapy simply means that a man has been treated for his prostate cancer with some modality, whether it be surgery or radiation or cryosurgery, uh, and that treatment has failed, meaning the cancer has uh, lived through the treatment or the cancer has returned. Uh, with salvage therapy, uh, we expect that the patient has local recurrence of the cancer. And so what we're trying to do uh, with salvage therapy is basically secondary treatment. In other words, trying to cure the cancer that wasn't cured with the initial treatment. So salvage therapy can mean surgery, it can mean radiation therapy, it can mean cryosurgery. Uh, simply it's a, uh, the second um, chance for the patient to be cured uh, of the disease. So if a man has surgery initially, uh, radiation therapy is commonly used as salvage treatment later on uh, if the cancer recurs. If a man has radiation therapy done initially, then we can go back and remove the prostate uh, as salvage treatment or we can do cryosurgery as salvage treatment. And then if a man has cryosurgery as an initial treatment, we can go back and do radiation therapy uh, uh, later on as salvage treatment if necessary. Medical oncology is the medical specialty that treats cancer. 
uh, we are the doctors that patients think of when we say cancer doctors. Uh, we specialize in chemotherapy uh, and systemic therapy of any sorts for any cancer. Medical oncology in prostate cancer um, is generally utilized when the cancer has spread outside the prostate. Um, we have many treatments out there for prostate cancer today, including immune therapy, chemotherapy, and hormone therapy. And many times, um, when the cancer is out of the prostate, it's generally not curable, and patients come to me for further therapy. And it is the medical oncologists that start them on the sequences of therapies that will hopefully improve their quality of life and prolong their survival. You know, you go in, you're scared, you're, you're saying something strange is about to happen to me, you don't know what's gonna happen, and they put you to ease right away. Those two guys, Dr. Pace and Dr. Bevan Thomas, saved my life. And I, how can you say thank you to those guys more? If I was to sum up my total experience through my prostate cancer procedure, my experience with Dr. Justin Lee, USMD, Prostate Cancer Center, the one word I would describe is success. Success at the ultimate. I promise you. I couldn't ask for a better doctor, a better hospital, and better results than what I got. Not to God, they. And I'm so grateful, so thankful for Dr. Justin Lee and USMD Prostate Cancer Center. Thank you for choosing the USMD Prostate Cancer Center. Our world-class facility and expert surgeons are here to help you through this difficult and trying time. Call us today to schedule your screening and evaluation at one of our convenient office locations throughout the Metroplex. 1-888-PROSTATE Learn more online at www.888prostate.com